Uh, I'm really happy that you are involved in this project. There's like, you know, uh, more than 200 artists participated in providing art for this collection. And so you're the representation and maybe I think we can uh, start a, a little. I think that, you know, Friday evening uh, or during the day um, might complicate some, some attendance, but I think that we can uh, simply have a brief discussion uh, answer some questions and we will post it so that everybody will have the mm, uh, we have will have the possibility to listen to it uh, later. What do you guys think? Uh, yeah, I, yeah I, that's I, a little bit. I was under the same Thank train you. of thought. I, I figured because we're so scattered all over the planet, um, uh, most people will attend uh, based on their timelines. So the whole point of this conversation is. I wanted to just uh, ask you guys some questions about your world and your processes, record that, and provide that information to everybody so they can listen to it at their own time. Um, we do have a few people here, and I think more will eventually show up. But uh, in the meantime, I suspect we should just get going. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so I'm, I'm just going to fire off some questions. And uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be every person answer every question. So whoever's comfortable answering the questions, um, we can go with that. And if multiple people want to answer the same question, that's also good. So uh, the first question is a basic one. Introduce yourselves and tell us some basic facts about you. And uh, I'm just going to say, let's say Lovecraft, go ahead first. And then we'll go with one and then Sandra. Yeah, sure, no problem. Um, as you already said, my artist name is Lovecraft. I'm Chris. I'm from Germany. And I started with digital graphics design somewhere around 1998 and worked for different agencies over the next 20 years. And I also did some programming for websites and applications. And um, as technology progressed, animation and video were also parts of my skills that I added to it. And uh, next to my professional career in the field of advertising and design, I um, also preserve my passion, which is music. And uh, music is something which I did uh, from many different angles as a musician, as roadie. I did video work. Um, I, did, I even was a lighting tech and an audio tech at times, um, but also from the journalistic side. And now in the later years, also as producer, composer, and I also run the label. Wow, very diversified. A man of many talents. <laughs> You've been yeah, yeah I would everything. also <laughs> add, guys, I would also add that Chris is one of the, our first artists who participated in the SOTA project. So the, ma the man clearly has good vision. I'll give him that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. Thanks, guys. Uh, one, you want to go great. ahead? Actually, do you want me to call you one or do you want me to call you by your name? Uh, well, actually, since I'm here, you know, representing 101, I prefer to stand by that. Sounds but um, the item, usually we are two. Uh, my partner is Excel. She's from Belgium. I'm from Barcelona. Usually we're always working together, but lately we are trying to bring the company here to Barcelona to start to move some projects that we are working on currently. But, you know, sometimes it is difficult, so sometimes we have to be in different places. That's why she's not here now. So I'll try to do my best for the two of us. Um, so basically 101, what we do in 101, we are an art lab, a creative and innovative art lab we are, where we are trying to explore the utility of human creativity in combination with new emerging technologies such as, well, we all know, blockchain, Web3 and smart contracts, like uh, NFTs. What we do is uh, lately we are working on trying to build something that we define as a social safety, safety net, which is guaranteeing uh, a minimum of, let's say, life quality. I come from a very, very poor neighborhood here in Barcelona. Uh, for those who don't know, the economical uh, activity of Spain is basically depending on tourism. So, which means that, for example, for us during Corona, no tourism, no economy. Most of the people I know is suffering of poverty or in threat of social exclusion. So that's why we were working on building something that can ensure people from falling into this, you know, like depressive situation. 
which is not having resources or not having even access to opportunities because you are not even educated. I'm not sure if I'm making sense for you guys. Uh, also, I like to have some feedback since it's my first time. Sometimes I get a bit overwhelmed by the situation, but I'll try to do my best. No, man, you're doing an absolutely great job. Like I've actually it really learned quite a bit about your process just now, and I'm, I'm quite happy to have you on board. You know, a lot of people do need help and support, especially when it comes to like some of these poverty region countries. And I'm quite happy that you're doing that. Good for you, man. I think what we are basically doing, we are trying to point NFTs in a different direction. So let's say that we usually see NFTs as a beautiful cover, something that more than utility is just uh, something that you flex because it has some type of social appreciation be because of the, I don't know, is a trending is a trending collection or the person creating it is famous. So it's not about what you actually do with the NFT, but more about showing off with the NFT. So we were thinking about this process of actually bringing value, but not depending on, okay, we are famous, but we are not famous. So we are trying to do something good with this. That's why in the city of Barcelona, we are building currently this event, which is an educational and cultural event where we will show, uh, we will show in lifetime to all type of people, people that is uh, into NFTs or cryptos and those who are not, how to actually start to not only transit, but navigate this new ecosystem. We delivering personal and professional tools for them to be again competitive in the ever changing professional market. And that's what we basically do and what we are. That is a fantastic overview. I really appreciate you sharing that. I'm going to get back to you on this point in just a couple questions. I just want to give Sandra the opportunity to shine some light on her creative genius and uh, give us some facts about herself before we continue. Sandra, you want to go? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, I'm Sandra. I live basically uh, currently in Zurich, uh, Switzerland. And I'm a full-time illustrator and graphic designer owning my own design studio and also uh, running my own freelance business as an illustrator. So it can be a little bit confusing. My design business uh, is with uh, other people and my illustration business is just me. So that's the thing. Um, and uh, I've been independent now for two years, but I'm a de uh, designer and illustrator since well basically a designer for like uh, almost 10 years now um and i just started illustrating actually um professionally two years ago when i lost my agency job due to covid and i always loved illustration and that was kind of like the moment where i was kind of like okay let's just give this a go because at my last agency job i was really mostly in charge of kind of like all the illustration um accounts and um yeah, I really liked it. And I was kind of like, okay, maybe this could be something that I, I could do uh, in my in my life because I always love to draw. But I, uh, I don't know, I guess I was a little bit too scared to give uh, the illustration a real go. And I uh, just worked as a graphic designer before. So yeah, uh, that's me in a nutshell. Um, yeah, let me just know if you want to know something else. Uh, yeah. and, um, so w while I have you and now I'm just going to go in reverse order. Um, you being in, in the illustration space uh, and actually 2020 is where NFT started to explode. Um, yeah. How did the world of NFT come into your life? And um, in your space, I, I'm, you're, you're dealing with illustrations all the time. Um, did you notice other people, or other graphic designers jumping into the NFT space and that's something you wanted to explore? Or like, how did the whole NFT thing creep into your life? Yeah, definitely. Um, it was a little bit of, of, of everything that you kind of mentioned. So um, I had heard, of course, about this thing, NFTs. And obviously, I, well, first I heard about crypto, cryptocurrency, blockchain, everything. And I think like most people, I just didn't understand a thing at the beginning. And then I started um, understanding a bit more. And, you know, some friends were getting really excited about this. And, you know, as an artist, I was kind of like, I don't know, you know, these are like finance people who are interested in this. And I don't know. And then I saw that this was also happening in the creative community. And I was like, mm, OK, what's that? Um, and then, you know, I invested in my first uh, crypto, obviously it was Bitcoin, uh, like, yeah, I guess like 90% of the people. Um, and I, I sold like a couple of weeks before Elon Musk invested. So that was <laughs> my little story of failure. 
Mm. Um, and um, yeah, well, you know, it's uh, this is this is how it is sometimes. Um, and then um, so I I met uh, my my current partner who is working in a crypto uh, firm here in Switzerland. So they're uh, building their own cryptocurrency and everything. So this kind of like came into my life a second time after. I didn't really understand the first time what, what all of this was about. I was like, okay, so this is interesting. And then I saw like a friend of mine uh, really getting into NFTs and I talked to her like, okay, what are you doing? What is this? Um, yeah. And I started to get more and more interested. And then, yeah, it was like, just, it was, it was more and more around me and like more people in my life were um, into this NFT or crypto or something. And I was like, okay, well, let's just, uh, try to learn more about this. I feel like I'm still really at the beginning of learning about uh, crypto, NFTs, and everything. Uh, but I think it's a very exciting and and, and promising um, world that I'm just happy to be part of um, in this early stage. And I'm just trying to learn on the go. And I was just like, yeah, the, the gift is a go when when you approach me. Um, so it, it's kind of like my way to push myself into learning more about NFT. So, yeah, Absolutely. I'm just uh, happy to have the opportunity to learn with you. I think uh, a lot of our journeys uh, is very similar to yours. We just kind of fell into it and one thing led to another and one thing to another. Next thing we know, we're part of a collection and we're building things and everything's changing every day. You know, Elon Musk is selling, we're buying, and then we're buying and Elon is selling. <laughs> it's it's just a, it's a whole mess of things that's going on. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It's just so, yeah, it's very interesting how this works sometimes. You know, I was kind of like, I was like, okay, let's get into this thing. And then like two weeks later, when I really like made the decision i had your dm in my instagram account i was like okay that's fun you know like this is sometimes how life works so i'm just gonna say yes and see where this takes me and well here we are today awesome. it's almost like man <laughs> manifesting things into reality which actually yeah. leads me to my next point um and that this this one is for my friend one of one um, so I think Sandra just talked about briefly about her involvement in the NFT space. It seems like you were already aware of the NFT space and kind of thinking about building things. So what was your reaction or like, how did you decide to join Soda? I suspect Soda either DM'd you or, uh, um, somehow found your page. What was your thinking in terms of collaborating with Sota and why did you really want to jump in? Well, uh, if I'm not wrong, I think it, we mutually found each other because I tend to explore and to dive into Instagram and Twitter. And somehow, if I'm not wrong with my personal account, I came across your profile. So I was like, oh, this is actually, actually interesting. And But I was not really, sometimes, you know, I don't like to be the creepy guy texting you when we don't know each other, you know? Right. So sometimes I like to, to wait to let things develop itself in a natural way, so, which means being genuine. Uh, but I was really intrigued by, you know, like this thing of customizing um, skateboards. That also, you have uh, an skateboard that is a digital asset, which is the NFT, but at the same time is, uh, is back up or give you access to a physical item. And I was like, well, actually, this is really cool because I don't know if you know also, again, about Barcelona, but I'm also, I used to skate when I was a kid and Barcelona is one of the, in terms of, um how you call it, space distribution or the architecture is really flat the city so for skaters it's kind of like perfect you can basically surf the whole city and you can go from the mountain to the sea in a matter of 20 30 minutes so when i came across your profile i was like wow it would be amazing you know like to actually start to customize the skateboards that somehow friends of mine always the drifting jumping you know like they but they can use it oh, more than you know for the act of selling it was more for the act of sharing sharing my art with this community that i used to be part of which is the skater community here in barcelona when i was a kid when my knees were okay and and yeah I, some somehow i think you your team approaches and i will and i was like let's definitely let's do it i mean i really like the concept. I also like the sport. I know the community here in the in the city. I have practiced myself the sport. So in a way, it kind of like came natural, and everything seemed to be, I don't know, like really suitable for my persona and also for us. And we just decided to go all in with you guys. 
Mm, awesome. Actually, my my reaction to the to the um, I, I've been involved myself, and in, I used to run multiple other projects. And my reaction to the space of NFT and canvases at first, it was like, hmm, that's a very interesting idea. It's never really been explored. Um, but like the more I'm involved and the more artists that I speak to, I, I can see that there's this creativity going on behind the scenes. Everyone's like, oh, wow, this is a very interesting idea. Um, so the, this next question is for Chris. And actually, guys, at any point, this is more of just a friendly conversation between creators. And uh, I think we're all in, in this creative space. You guys are there as creators. We're, we're trying to build this brand, the Sota brand. So if, at any point, if you want to jump in and just have talk, it's totally open mic right now. Um, I will try to navigate things a little bit better um, to keep the flow going. Um, but again, if you want to answer a question that I asked the previous creator, absolutely jump in and go for it. So the, the, the next question here I wanted to talk to Chris about is um, how what was your reaction uh, to the approach of Soto, but also your uh, to creating on a canvas in a skateboard? Chris, you with us? Now I found now I found the mute button. Okay, <laughs> I tried one under the picture which didn't work. Um, okay. Anyway, um, I really have a feeling that uh, skateboard is a very dynamic canvas because uh, it's one of these few things which you can either hang on the wall or you can take it out for a spin, which you shouldn't try with a Picasso, I would say. Mm -hmm. And um, I really love the the fact that it's not a square format that you are are bound to create a bit differently because you have this super wide. Um, format or yeah, actually as an upside down format a super long one and so you can yeah just give it a different approach and this was really a nice idea and this was really fascinating me the first time you guys talked to me about uh, the idea of uh, creating art especially for the use of being a skateboard later on mm. it's interesting because some people actually have an aha moment right away and uh some people i've shared my friends with that they don't quite get it so it seems like the natural response for an artist has been recently, it, they're very excited to create on a different format, is exactly what you just said. Um, but the typical NFT guys that I speak to, they're like, hmm, that's interesting, I don't quite get it. But then when I show them all of the artworks that all the artists have created, they're like, wow, this is actually really amazing. I wonder what the utility is. I wonder where this thing can go. So it, it seems like the artists figure, it, figure things out much quicker than uh, the general population. Um, yeah, pro probably it's just the creative approach. It's it's the thing of uh, whatever you you toss in front of me, I can I can make into a piece of art, and um, so it's it's just a new thing to work on. And I'm always fascinating when I get the chance to work with something I didn't work with before. Okay, awesome. So uh, this next question is going to be for everyone, but we'll start with Chris uh, just because I have him on the mic. And and this is uh, Chris. You've been, you've done. It seems like you've absolutely done everything in terms of the creative space. You've done music. You've done illustrations. You've done web design, etc. So in your in your career, what's been one of the biggest bigger challenges as an artist? Do you? I and, think. And maybe sorry. And maybe your proudest moment that you like. You've accomplished this. You're like, I got this. That's amazing. I did it. Like, is there a moment like that in your life? Uh, yeah, for sure. But I'm going to start with the first one, which is uh, what's the biggest challenge? I think the biggest challenge for any creative is to fill up your fridge and to put your fridge on the roof. I think this is uh, why lots of creatives today work in graphics design, work for agencies and stuff, um, which is also a challenge in itself because it always uh, means that you have to create within a certain limitation. When you work for a client, you have to get things done the way the client wants, wants, wants it to be done. And I think the biggest joy is to just start from the top of your head and bring it out and then people deciding to like your art, which you made exactly the way you wanted to. And so for me, small things where I really feel uh, the sense of achievement is whenever I sell an NFT, for example. It's something that has become quite common because ever since I started NFTs, I already did way over a thousand pieces, uh, all individual pieces, no generator stuff. And um, yeah, so each time some, some new person decides to collect your art is, is always a great moment. But I think like the biggest moments for me, since I'm mainly a musician, is, um, for example, when you are playing in a different country. We had the joy of still being able to tour in Russia before the entire situation arose. And these are moments where you really think, wow, I, I really now get the chance to, to 
get this this feedback for my art that I go out to Moscow to St. Petersburg and uh, to have people in front of stage and to just party with them and to feel how um, how international art is and how how com uh, what a combining force it is because everybody in art is the same and um, yeah this is where I feel like the biggest joy in art. Oh, well, that's an yeah. amazing. Uh, actually, yeah, go ahead. One on one, if you want to go, or Sandra, feel free. Oh, I was just willing to say that that was beautiful. I like the way that you look at things and how you expose things. I agree with you. And well, answering you the most challenging way. Uh, well, I haven't said it before, but personally, I started my my digital artist career like not so long ago. I'm more a uh, traditional painter. I actually got in NFTs because I was really intrigued by cryptos in 2016. And I'm more a trader. I'm more into cryptos than NFTs. Uh, even if I am now into NFTs, I, I love cryptos and the technology behind. So the challenge for me was jumping from traditional painting to like, for example, I do all canvas, watercolor. I like to do a big portrait. Uh, I like hyper realism. But the challenge was uh, jumping into these, you know, like, like for example, using an iPad. It might seem like something silly, but for me, it was quite challenging. Like, for example, using Blender, Cinema 4D, starting to use Nomad. It was really, really challenging to to deal with the fact that, wow, the market is so competitive. People is already doing amazing stuff. Time is running against me. And my art is not really, like, expressing what I do when I'm doing with my hands. So the psychological aspect was quite challenging for me because I was having to deal with the personal expectations on how my job should look in the end of the process. I was always kind of like denying the, you know, like, okay, um, I'm now a newbie. I have to learn. I have to enjoy the, the journey. It's not about the end, the destination, but the journey and blah, blah, blah. But I was struggling with that, with that part of having to accept that, okay, it takes time. And I just have to allow myself to commit mistakes, you know, like there are no mistakes, but just happy accidents. Or oh, that's what I used to tell to myself to not have the pressure and the formal because everything moves really, really fast in this uh, space. So I was just most of the time feeling like, is it really worthy? Um, people is already doing like crazy stuff. Like I have a friend of mine that is working with uh, Generative Arts. It's 2014 and they are doing like, uh, 3D animations uh, with uh, a yeah, protocol or something like that. They do like this guy that did, do you know, like uh, La Casa Batio here in Barcelona. There was the this Turkish guy doing a, a projection on the building. I don't know if you have ever heard about this artist. I don't remember the name now. But basically, well, my, my friend was dealing also with something like that. So I always had this kind of like sense of competition that I was not able to fulfill in this aspect. So, yeah, the challenge was dealing with that psychological barrier. Mm. The biggest accomplishment I can say, and actually quite proud, that recently 101 became, if I'm not wrong, we are the first art lab or in general artists in, in Europe. Transiting a museum into the blockchain, we create the first asset for the Contemporary Museum of Belgium, for the Mass Museum, which is uh, the first time that this museum made an NFT exhibition, uh, mint an NFT, and now they possess their own NFT, which uh, is part of the private collection, which is 150 years old. That will be, for me, the most proud moment because it proved that anything is possible if you work hard enough for. That is a beautiful achievement. Um, I'm glad you shared that with us because yeah, congrats on that. Yeah, but yeah, that's amazing. That gave me an idea of actually, uh, I, I, I don't know why I didn't think about this before, but I would love to have a, a section either on Discord or on Twitter where we feature the accomplishments of all the artists that's involved with us. I'm, I'm sure there's many, and it would be a great way for the community to be like, oh wow, this artist is in this collection. That's amazing. That just would bring, uh, that would just make so much sense to share your achievements with our communities as well and i think it if if well for one i have to figure out how to bring in all of that together um but i think dorian if you're here this is definitely something we should do um that is a, a big accomplishment and i'm like happy well congratulations absolutely um, thank, thank you so and and i think that what you said it would be a great idea because something that i personally struggle with is that 
people don't share their personal life experience in this space. So it's it's hard sometimes to deal with with the past of time. I mean, you need sometimes some motivation, some encouragement, and even told people uh, I have found in the, the NFT space is amazing. Hearing the background life experience also helps to deal with, okay, you are a newbie, there is time. Just take it easy and keep on doing. And I mean, yeah, we definitely need to share all our life experiences. That's why, for example, personally, before we were not too active on the Discord, which I have to say apologize because, as I said, we were struggling with the with the competition. We had to really up, uh, we we really have to level up our game. But I think that one of the things that will help people to also be more active is sharing this type of personal experience, not only mine but all of us, because I I would love to hear all the people's life experience too in this space and get motivated, inspired, and encouraged by them. I think. Um... This conversation has already uh, had a few light bulb moments for myself. Is we've had what well, we do, we have hundreds of talented artists, but we've we've also struggled to uh, share all of your stories and achievements. And there has to be a way where I can gather all that information, and it has to be almost it, it has to be easier where I'm not like for example DMing each of you asking you, but perhaps on a voluntary basis where you share certain either your tweets or moments in your life and we naturally uh, post that in various locations and I think that would be an absolute great addition to the community because then they'll have the ability to see okay wow this is happening this happened this happened with this artist and naturally you will like our discord is still growing i'm sure you all have your own platforms that are substantially greater than what we have at the moment but we are still in the baby steps once our community is you know in, in the hundred in the thousands i don't know a hundred thousands a little bit optimistic and hopefully one day we get there um but that just have the ability for everyone to see who's a part of this this amazing collection and who's all coming together so i uh, thank you for sharing that with us because i'm definitely going to implement that somewhere um sandra the floor, yeah. is, the floor is yours if you want to share your greatest achievements, uh, struggles in, in the art world. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I I was thinking about that. Um, and I just find myself constantly struggling again with the kind of like keeping the balance between working and working for your clients or working for yourself and not getting burned out, um, especially in times of high demand and lots of commissions. Um, and I think that's not that much the, the, the struggle actually, but it's mostly just the surrendering to the factors that you cannot control because you can just to a certain amount, I have uh, realized you can control this, um, the, the demand and the, um, and the lack of demand, let's say. Um, and there is always a certain amount of um, things that just are out of your control. And, and this is mostly my struggle with like the accepting the times when it's, when it's slow and accepting the times when it's just lot, lots of stuff going on. Um, and, um, but then I think this is, can also be one of the achievements when, when I can just kind of like go with the flow and just be happy with um, what I'm just working on right now, whether it's a lot of work or whether it's, um, well, maybe not that many commissions, but I have a lot of time to work for myself because it's, I really do believe that uh, as creative people, it's extremely hard to only work for other people. I mean, I know people like that and they love it and I admire that so, so, so much really. Um, I'm not really like that. I really like to um, also express myself through my work um, and then I find it very important to really also find time to kind of like rediscover what is actually the thing that I want to share what is my message what I want what do I want my audience to engage with um, and yeah between client work it's not always easy to make time for that so that's definitely one of the challenges and when I actually get to have that time to find that time that's one of my achievements so I was thinking about the achievement you know and it's you know i can i can kind of like name drop or list clients or something like that but that's really i mean this is that's all nice and good and i'm not saying that i don't enjoy that um but the real achievement i guess is when i actually find 
clients that really resonate with who I am as a as a creator and want to work with me because of that and not just because I manage Photoshop or something well um, and that we are actually on the same wavelength and we are working together because we want to make each other's business better. Um, that for me is, is beautiful. And when I find a client that I can just kind of like think like, yes, I can, I love working with them because I really truly believe in what they're doing and I love this and, um, yeah, this is a great mission. And then, uh, work becomes something else. It becomes kind of like a mission. It becomes something that comes from the heart, from the passion and yeah. Uh, so I would definitely say this is, this is an achievement having, having clients that not only, like what you do, but also um, like who you are and um, your voice as an artist and as not just as a creator, but also as a, as a person. And they want to engage with that and they want this for their brand. That's, yeah, I love that. Well, thanks for sharing that. Um, it's, it's interesting. While I'm listening to the three of you talk, I find so many similar struggles that's happening between you and then there's like similar drives and similar um complexities it's like what uh, one of one mentioned this uh, the ability to let yourself make mistakes and take your time to figure it out i find myself being in that situation all the time because my head's always spinning i'm always trying to learn seven different things at the same time and i end up being shit on all of them <laughs> because i can't focus on one thing and that's the challenge of like the, the, the creative mind I think uh, Chris has figured it out being successful in like 17 different venues. So maybe you could share your secrets with us at one point. Um, but uh, another question I wanted to ask you guys, and this is something that just came to me. I, I feel like this is more of a brainstorming session than anything else. It's um, Would it be useful for you as the artist community to have a place where you can talk to each other? Um, because I, I, I see that there could be a lot of value where – just in this conversation alone, I hope you guys are friends afterwards and can talk about, you know, potential challenges or, you know, business and whatnot you could come up with. Would there be value in a place where the, the artists can come together and actually get to know each other on a deeper level than just a username in a dashboard? You, anyone can answer um, this. Actually, I would like to answer this because um, I am in, active in many different um, NFT projects or different platforms. And um, it's something that uh, all of the ones that make it to a certain point start to implement. That, For example, you get um, an artist um, Discord or something. And I realized that most of the time uh, you learn way more about the other artists when you're just in a general chat or uh, a direct uh, private message chat with them than um, the stuff that goes on on the artist servers because usually these artist servers uh, are dead after a while because uh, everybody has so many different uh, stuff to look at that uh, it's way better to just meet at a certain time, talk to each other, and um, then take it down to a personal level or just go into a chat um, after it. But I don't think a, a permanent um, area is so good to have. Mm, makes sense. Unfortunately. Um, I think you know, great points because I think general chats are absolutely helpful in, in a number of ways because there's always somebody there you can speak to. Um, would it be interesting or helpful to have more AMAs in this format with more people? Um, I feel like I wouldn't be able to get to know you on this level just through general chats, but just having this, I don't know, 20-minute conversation with each of you, I feel like I know where you're all at in your life and what you're trying to do and the challenges and accomplishments, etc. Um, I can see having like 10, 15 artists come together and just talk about life and talk about the challenges. It, it might, it, would that be useful at all? I think that sounds like a brilliant idea. For now, you have actually done a lot of questions. So everybody had, um, had an idea to, to think about stuff. But I think more artists and less topics for one evening could be a, a cool solution. Yeah, I agree. That's a, because when we initially planned this AMA, um, I, I didn't want it just to be uh, f like a bullet, me just constantly asking you guys questions. In fact, I wanted to meet you and just have a free flow as we are right now. And I think having, you know, we have 200 artists on one collection. I'm sure we'll be able to pull together 10 artists for a session, maybe from similar backgrounds or similar locations that, you know, they could just freely have a chat. Could be like a Friday night session where we just, talk about like 
art, NFTs, where things are going, and have the community tune in as well. It could be quite beneficial, I think. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, Sandra, go for it. Yeah, yeah. I, I personally, I think that's super interesting um, because, um, yeah, I still consider myself that I have basically no idea about NFTs. Uh, although I do recognize that uh, um, it, it always depends, uh, you know, in what kind of round you are in this round, I, I'm definitely the person who, who knows the least. <laughs> um, so it would be really cool for me to have this kind of motivation to uh, join a um, call, t talk session, something like that with like other artists. I'm sure I'm not uh, the only one who doesn't really understand all of this. And um, it would be really cool to, yeah, if you just kind of like, you know, invite us and be a little bit persistent, maybe, because um, I am also still figuring out Discord. Mm -hmm. um, so that has definitely kind of like has been holding me back a little bit with engaging with people because by the love of God, I just am having a hard time figuring it out. And I feel like an 80 year old grandma because of it <laughs> um so yeah i think that would be a really cool way because then maybe you know if it's like a small group of like 10 people it would also be really nice maybe with, with video so we can see each other and see each other's reaction and uh it could still be cool if you want to kind of like record it and then share it for people who want to watch it afterwards i would be totally fine with that but i would also really like to see the other people and if the group is small, I wouldn't feel like too embarrassed to ask stupid questions. And I think that would be, you know, like that. I, I personally would think that could be really nice. That's actually brilliant. Sorry, go ahead. One. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was just really, really agree. Well, I'm actually agree with both of with the two of them because each one of them has a different uh, way of 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 holding the subject. Like, I agree with you, the fact that, okay, it's good to have this space, but we definitely need a host. Otherwise, the attention will go away, and in a way, it will die. I mean, that space, because a host and very few topics, and also a petite comité, as Sandra said, allows this, I don't know, like, this real sense of community to to become. I mean, the chats are, are lovely, don't get me wrong. I love to text, but nothing like you know, like hearing a voice, a human voice, and being able to understand the emotions that that person is really experiencing. And that's what that space would, would really allow, you know, to really get to know in a more organic way, do I like this person besides the art? Or I don't like the person. Can we build together? Can we keep on building our friendship? Like, oh, maybe we start a friendship because before I was just seeing the, the picture, the, the profile picture, and I was like, oh, it sounds kind of cool, but we don't know the mindset of the person. So I definitely believe that those direct spaces, like where we can have, I don't know, like one or two topics and 10 to 20 people, those that would be a great space to really build a more humanitarian community. I love that. I think I, I'm completely on board with both of you. Um, absolutely. I can see that having something like a, a Zoom chat with 10 people, I don't think it's possible to really do it on Discord. In fact, it's it might be a little bit clunky, uh, but p potentially like once a week, shooting off an email to all the artists with a specific topic that we'd like to discuss on that evening related to blockchain or art or NFT. Invite whoever wants to come to the Zoom chat, record it, just have, I don't know, 30 minute, one hour conversation. I think it'll go over one hour when you have 10, 15 people who are passionate about the space. Record it and, and, and go from there. Whoever shows up, shows up. Whoever doesn't, doesn't. And it could just be a regular thing that we do in the space because I think so many of you have so many deep experiences that you can actually teach one another. In fact, I'm, I've learned so much from both of you already, or three of you, that it would be, and this idea is coming from this conversation. I never even thought about this before, basically uh, reaching out to everybody that's involved. So far, you've all been creators. You've all submitted works. But now, like I can see, there's so much more that we could do with everybody. Um, I'm excited about this aspect of it more than anything else right now. Um, so thank you all for sharing. That was awesome. Um, well, thank you for coming out with the idea because I think it's really good. And for people like, for example, me, that I struggle sometimes with text, especially in chat groups where the subject of the conversation is constantly changing and people is constantly giving uh, different inputs and starting to, I don't know, like maybe build kind of like a connection with another person, which means even it's a public chat, there are like private conversations. So I don't, I don't really know how to port sometimes those chat groups, but I believe that this will be a great way to really start to, to be part of the community in a more active way. 
um, yeah, and absolutely. I think I'm just going to run with this, and Dorian and I are going to figure out how to properly execute on this. Um, I, I, there's one thing, Sandra, you mentioned that you still haven't been able to figure out Discord. Um, if you have questions, let me know because I will. I, I have recorded videos on tutorials on what Discord is and how it operates and how you can use it. Um, and I'll be glad to basically guide you through the process because I, I live on this thing. Um, and I, I personally think it's one of the best platforms that's ever been created just because the ease of use of, I mean, for me, it's ease of use. For you, it could be like, yo, what is this thing? Um, just there, There's just so many things you could do, so many different uh, spaces you can create for individuals to come in, share information. You could share music, play games, etc. cetera. It's, it, it, it's basically like the 2020th version of msn or whatever back in the day that existed I don't know if you guys know that <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely i would love that um anything i can learn about all of this um I'm, i would be super happy about because i just you know i saw that there were like a bunch of messages and then you know i went into that and i was like okay yeah cool that uh you know people are messaging around i don't know any of these people so you know i wasn't you know all too um eager to respond um so now that i know a couple of people on the um on the discord it's it's way more interesting now so now i can mm -hmm. see like okay what are they sharing it's also really cool like when you shared all the other art um artworks that was really really cool so that was always something that i really enjoyed and helped me kind of like engage with this but yeah I'm, I'm still definitely still figuring it out and i would be really grateful for any kind of um help with that Okay. All right. So I, I find this I find this conversation to be super productive for us. <laughs> Great. <laughs> there's, I like um, hearing. There's, sorry. Um, there's one thing I just wanted to uh, to add to the technical possibilities of doing such a hangout as we're having right now. I don't know if you guys have uh, ever tried out Twitter Spaces. Um, the situation there is that uh, you also have an audio chat like we're having right now, but uh, the difference is that not everybody can talk right away. It's like you have one person who starts the, the conversation and then if somebody wants to say something, they can press a button and say, I want to step up and uh, go to the speaker table, basically. And um, the one who's doing the moderator can then invite them to talk. So you can actually manage a larger group of people pretty well um, because you have one person who is the designated moderator. Yeah, absolutely. I've I've been in many Twitter uh, spaces on other NFT projects. There's a couple limitations to it. I, I don't think you can have. I don't think you can speak from a computer. You have to be on a mobile device. Um, and the the limitation of not being able to see the other person's face. Um, yeah, so, that's for sure. Yeah, so we can definitely explore all options, but I'm leaning more and more towards the idea of a Zoom call with uh, the artist, where we shoot off an email once a week about a specific topic. Whoever wants to show up. Uh, and then I, I'd be happy to moderate it so that we could stick on topic and whatnot. And then, you know, I think you'll make close relationships and friends from that. And, and then from that, we can create another area where everyone's sharing. I, I think once you know more people, you're more comfortable engaging and sharing, as Sandra just put it. You know, before today, I, I knew who each of you were on paper, but now if I see you in the sub, I'm more comfortable just to, you know, talk about where, where things are going with your projects on an individual basis. And, and I think when you do this, let's say once a week for a month and you get to know 30, 40 other 50 artists on the Discord, you're just more comfortable to come back and to discuss and engage, etc. cetera. Um, yes, certainly. Yeah, go ahead. I, I just want to say certainly that that uh, definitely is it is that way, and um, especially with the with SOTA as a project, um, it's really nice that um, there is not really a limitation um, of uh, talking about your art in general. Because I think everybody of us um, is also selling their art on different platforms, and this is something that is completely okay from the viewpoint of SOTA. So you don't have to like um, watch out uh, for which project you're talking at the moment because on some other projects, they're super picky that only stuff that is uh, published on their project um, can be talked about. And here I have a feeling that we are pretty much an open um, yeah, area for every artist and it, it doesn't matter uh, if you're only selling with SOTA or on many different places. Yeah, absolutely not. We don't have those limitations here. Um, I think 
when people see the collection that the artists have put together along with the team, it, the immediate reaction is like, wow, this is actually very different and very like on a premium on a premium basis and I, I, we're quite proud of that so there we don't have any restrictions on like c competing projects you know like you're an artist you go create whatever you want to create be a part of whoever collection you want to be a part of and if you want to talk about it more than happy to you know chat because what, what ends up happening is because you are a part of this collection and if you are participating in other collections or other projects there's if some other collection or project is doing something that's like very unique and that we could learn from, I think as an artist you would absolutely want to want to share that, and there's a learning and growth opportunity there as well. Um, okay, guys, I'm gonna ask you one last question, um, and uh, then I'll open it up if you just want to hang out and talk. But I, I'm sure you guys are busy and all that. So one last question, and then we'll go. We'll keep the floor open. There won't be any questions from me. We can just chat. Um, and we'll go with Lovecraft again, or Chris, one of one, and then Sandra. Um, where do you guys see yourselves, development-wise, or technological-wise, artistic-wise, within the next three to four years? Whether it's blockchain or it's you know, your own personal aspirations. Okay, did, I, did, I did hit the wrong button again. Um, so I think uh, when I look at the next five years, most of all, I, I really believe and I really hope that the, the live music scene will recover because at the moment it's just terrible and I really like to be back on the road a lot more in the future. But um, in the COVID years, basically creating digital art has become a natural part of my life and this is something that I want to keep up and I will definitely continue creating new visuals. Uh, on a daily basis, basically. And um, I also believe that um, NFTs and selling NFTs will give me more time in the future to work on more labor-intensive physical stuff or art performances or lighting performances, something like this, because I really like to do physical stuff, but most of the time it's just so limited by the funds I have available for that that uh, I think this is something that NFTs could help me with. Fantastic. Absolutely. It's like, it's like, a, I feel like we're in an age of the artist now. You know, we, we've had the industrial revolution. We've had the yeah. computer and nerd uh, a, a revolution where like computer scientists literally built the fabric of our net today. We are moving into the artistic uh, revolution where everyone is just out here creating, developing and sharing their information online for other people to purchase, which I think is a beautiful thing anyways. Um, yeah, it's amazing. All righty then, one of one, my friend. Anything you want to share with us about the next five years of your life? Definitely, definitely. First of all, I would love to say that I agree with you. I mean, right now I see not 100% only for, for artists because also the concept of artists is changing. I mean, artists are becoming coders, so coders are becoming artists. Uh, but I love the fact that right now, finally, artists have the access to really, you know, like not only protect the intellectual property, but to trade with it without any type of interference, which comes to me as art by art and finance, which is the time that we find ourselves now. And about where do I see myself or ourselves as one one we definitely have big plans, especially in terms of NFTs for good, which is a new way of doing all social activism or doing charity as you wanted to call. So the way that things are lately going, I would say that I see myself getting into politics here in Barcelona. I see myself using the technology with my partner and with the help of one one and all the people that we are meeting and the people that is yet to be met in the future or building like really, really interesting projects that are especially focused on making other people's life better, such as, for example, I can grant, a, I can go for you now a quick spoiler on something that we also currently working on, which is uh, the first, as we all know, uh, poor people has access to banks of food, but now with the help of 3D printing machines, we are willing to and working on building the first 3D clothing bank for poor people that has no access for wait, wait, clothes. Wait. Did you just say your first 3D clothing bank, as in you're printing clothes? Yes. Man, that's awesome. Can you? <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> can you share a link on like the general chat after this conversation? Because I want to see what you're doing. This is brilliant. 
<laughs> I I can share now the because we are we we met a uh, well, a friend of mine. Uh, I seem to he got into three D fashion and he had this uh, art lab that has been around more just like uh, slow fashion and local commerce and how to actually bring a different approach to a fast fashion is actually really damaging not only for environment but also in general even for the psych- for the human psyche because you are constantly having to be buying new new collections but you never really enjoy you know actually the action of just wearing some colors that looks good on you that makes you feel good or that basically just protects you from the weather in a primitive way mm-hmm. wow. so uh <laughs> sorry tell me tell me Oh, I, I, I don't know who that was, but uh, one, if you want to keep going, go for it. I'm finding like what you're doing is fascinating, like honestly. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sometimes I get in China, and since I heard your voice, I thought that you were willing to talk, so I was willing to show some respect for you. Uh, but yeah, uh, my friend is into into this project of fighting uh, fast fashion by bringing a different approach, by building awareness of how slow fashion can help to to well to respect nature to not damage that much and to even empower local commerce so i was like really intrigued by this and i was trying to have a different approach to this possibility of printing clothes because for me it was like wow this is definitely the future what can we do besides you know like just monetizing those products or services how, how can we actually have um an impact beyond just money so we started to 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 look around in our city and see that actually there is a lot of of people in the need of basic necessities shelter grocery housing clothing so we started to to think how can we approach all those problems with nfts but especially now with i uh, with the with the project of this guy which was of course 3d fashion so we came out with the idea of building the first 3D printing uh, fashion uh, bank for clothing. So people that has no money can basically be part of our database. We do, uh, we have a tracking service. We provide it uh, minimum uh, tools for them to also be uh, adequate for the submission because otherwise it will not be self-sustainable in the future and it will be impossible to keep on going. So that's also one of the things that we're trying to be focused on. Self-sustainability and longevity for the business model in the long term, like, to, for example, we lately seen with, uh, for example, with Binance, how to do some social uh, fundraising in the city of Barcelona to to bring awareness and to actually start to make this project possible. But yeah, that's uh, that's actually how we are doing now. Sorry for going a bit fast. I was getting a bit nervous now and shy, but that's uh, how I see ourselves in the future, getting into politics because that's basically. The, the main arena in order to make things better. So it's good to have projects that are helping other people. But in the end, any important subject in our society becomes a political subject. Mm. Honestly, man, you're doing amazing. You're, 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 the passion really comes down from your voice as you're talking about all the different projects. So don't be scared of being shy or whatnot. Like everything you just said is, uh, is, is actually very inspiring. And I'm, I'm happy that you're part of the collection and that you're doing this for so many people. Um, Again, send us a link for anyone who is going to listen to this later. If you want to uh, like dig deep into one on, what one on one is doing, I'll find all the information and post it somewhere, um, maybe on the main channels. If any of you have questions, let me know. I'll make sure you can follow him and all his crazy adventures over the next five years. Um, Thank you. And personally, I would love to invite anybody because we always accept all the people to be part of the project because our our goal is to build together. I mean, even if it sounds a bit like a cult, mm-hmm. it is what it is. It has to be a more inclusive and humanitarian economy, and we it's only possible if we if we work together. Absolutely. And yeah, anyways, we'll always uh, be count me in. You. Whatever you're doing, I'm happy to help out in any possible way. I love what you're doing. Um, I just want to give yes. the floor to Sandra to share, uh, to give us an eye highlight of all of her epic achievements over the next five years. Or struggles, both happen. <laughs> Sandra, you want to jump well, in? I hope, <laughs> sure, I hope there will be uh, manageable struggles, uh, obviously. 
Um, yeah, so I think, um, uh, well, I'm very focused basically on my, on my business, on my design business, and I would really love it if NFTs and all this new technology would give just more options to, to creative people and also people who are just basically interested in getting into, into creation. And also for me to, um, I would really like it if there was an, uh, the possibility of, of ma- making passive income. Uh, and I would obviously want this for other creatives as well, because uh, just as Chris said at the beginning, um, it's not always easy to make ends meet uh, in the creative field. And I, my, my wish kind of like, or my uh, utopia would be that uh, it becomes easier and more um, manageable for artists to um, well, first of all, they remain retain more of their rights with NFTs and to have the poss- possibilities to make a passive income and are not so forced to expose themselves to the market's demand and um, request and demand. So I guess that's, uh, that's kind of like my uh, world utopia. And for me, yeah, personally, I am interested in, in bringing... I'm building my business and I'm super open on how to bring in NFTs into uh, my my day-to-day. I'm very, very, uh, let's say, classic uh, graphic design and illustration business. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like just catching on little by little, I guess, this uh, NFT movement there. But I definitely see that it's like more and more people are like uh, interested in it and are kind of like have have learned a little bit about it or so so more people are like open towards it uh some people are still like super close um to these kind of like new developments and new technologies which i i think is kind of sad um because i think it brings like lots of uh, opportunities and i also think that they're like really cool um ways of just like diversifying the um yeah, the, the way an artist or a creative person can actually um, monetize their talent. So, um, yeah, I really uh, hope that it's also going to bring something into my business in that way. We're also talking to a, a crypto company to kind of like work with us on a designer's market. So uh, that could definitely be an interesting collaboration. And um, yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah. Uh- Honestly, I, I think, as I said, I think the age of the creators here, you can see it from absolutely every venue on TikTok, YouTube, whatever. Um, every creator out there is putting out their works and attracting their user fan base. I think NFTs is literally just the next uh, evolution when it comes to um, ownership of your own art. And uh, what you described in terms of passive income, in terms of royalties and whatnot, is definitely will come. To fruition in it, it's happening right now um mm-hmm. it just it, you just have to be part of a, a collection or put out content out there that people truly love and i hope that the sota foundation or Sota collection is that for you or at least contributes to that and it seems like you're already exploring uh, other venues so i think uh, opportunities are going to be endless in the next few years in this space yeah, that's that's very true. I also wanted to pick up that on that quickly. I just forgot uh, with the age of the creator. I really see like this. Yeah, it's definitely going, and I I feel really like the um kind of like the status of an artist is definitely changing, and there is like so much interest in um, so many people want to learn how to create, how to be, um, how to express themselves, how to draw, whatever. Um, there is so much content production being done right now and i think this could be really interesting now that you brought it up so i'm i'm also working um i'm i'm trying to embrace this new wave of like uh producing contents and tutorials and classes and all this online stuff that is going on because yeah uh client work is you know the classic client work is not always um yeah i mean there are just so many illustrators and graphic designers fighting over the same job so um, there are like a whole world of new possibilities. So this could also be pretty interesting to look into, like maybe, I don't know, tutorials turning into NFTs, turning into, um, I don't know. Yeah, I think there's just so many options that, I, that I'm that i just still not quite seeing because I'm, I'm, I'm so new to this. But um, I definitely think that there are so many exciting opportunities out there to um, secure ownership and also to... Um, 
yeah, just have so many different versions of your creations out there. Yeah, uh, it, I feel like we've only touched the surface of the NFT world. And every we have the collective human capital that's currently invested in blockchain and NFTs is just exploding day by day. With all mm -hmm. those ideas that's coming into the marketplace, you're just going to have these little aha moments where someone creates. Like, for example, the idea of 3D printed clothes, marrying that with, like, with, with NFTs never even crossed my mind. But it's a fantastic way to raise capital to support an amazing cause. And we have one of our artists doing that. How cool is that? And then I'm sure Chris is going to come up with something epic. I'm sure you're going to come up with something epic and it's just going to change the world completely. So I'm, I'm happy to have all of you on board. Um, I'm going to open up the floor to any of you with, for last words, anything you want to say, anything you want to share, you want to tweet your socials. Again, I, this conversation is recorded. I will post it into the AMA recordings and I'll post all of your socials there as well because I'm sure people are going to want to follow you after this conversation because now they know you a little bit. So if you want to say anything, go for it. I just want to say thank you, first of all, and nice meeting you all and nice uh, to hear the voice of the context of SOTA, which I, I, I rode with for over a year now. Uh, it's really nice, and I hope there's a starting point and that we can start doing things together because that's truly one of the things that I love about my entire journey in the NFT realm, so to say, that I really get to know new artists and that I already did, that did so many um, yeah, collaborations with people I had just barely known because uh, so many people in the NFT space just think so alike and it's just brilliant to grow and thank you guys. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, I thank also... you so much. Uh, sorry. Go ahead, one um, one. I was actually willing to say that you inspire me with now in your, in your previous speech because I believe that one of the, the major issues of this space is also the lack of education. So I'm not sure if you were 100% talking about that. But, well, you gave me the inspiration now, so th I was just willing to say thank you because I believe that, well, e-learning also has to evolve, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Sandra? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. 101, are you, are you done? Oh, yes, yes, for sure. I was <laughs> just willing to say thank you for the idea because I was just paying attention to what you were saying and... Well, it was quite inspiring, and I got this idea because of you, because of your narrative. So oh, that's I was just. Cool. Yeah. I, well, I'm I'm super curious to see what you come up with because I'm uh, I'm 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 just so so amazed by kind of like how to combine like tangible. So yeah, I'm mean, still like I'm I'm a little bit of a newbie here, but like combining the tangible with NFTs, which is definitely something that would really interest me because I'm still kind of like holding on to this like uh, physical thing this is actually something that i really loved about sota that you can also purchase the decks um for real um and i think this is also something that a lot of people are still kind of like interested in having something not just digitally but still something physically um so yeah it's like hearing all your ways like how, how you think already of how to uh, use nfts and combine them with other things like yeah theory d printed clothes or um i don't know that's like it's it's really inspiring so i'm so so happy uh, i've met you guys and thank you so much sota for organizing this and i can't wait for the uh, for the next uh uh hangouts or whatever you come up with um for the artists uh in order to meet so yeah big thank you to all of you also thank you so much for for um creating this super cool project i'm so excited for the launch and i'm super excited to see uh what you two chris and um 101 mm -hmm. will come up with in the future please keep me posted Definitely, I already sent you the friend request. Yeah, I saw that. I already accepted. Uh, I <laughs> just don't understand how friends work on Discord, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. <laughs> I just thought that it was interesting what you guys were saying. So when I feel that I like someone, I'm very straightforward and genuine. I just go for it. So yeah, that's uh, great. I, and the friendships. Great. Yeah. No. Now I have your contact, and now I can. I have one more excuse to use Discord. So that's great. Same, same. Because as you, I'm struggling with this. I mean, and as you, we also know this. I mean, this is this is a this is a long term game, and we barely started. We we don't know what's gonna be, you know. So I I definitely feel you. And if there is any question, any topic that you would like would like to discuss or just talk, like we are always here. We always open. 
Yeah, please. That that would also be that would be super great. And I'm very interested in what your uh, connection with the education was. So let's talk about that a little bit more. Um, um, in another occasion, I'm afraid because I will have to leave in about five minutes or so. The latest. I'll take that for granted, and I'll definitely hit you up. Uh, and also, uh, I have to leave because even though we are a bit already not all, but wiser i love to play some you know like some lower games in the in the night so i have a meeting with some friends to play some table games okay nice. guys honestly this was one, an amazing one, one, conversation please, please share links please share links of what you're doing because it is absolutely inspiring fantastic and yeah it was to be with all of you guys to be honest this is the first time that we have this type of interaction it was a bit overwhelming to not say really really overwhelming i was kind of like really nervous and anxious because i'm not really good on this thing of talking to my phone even though there's people on the other side and it was really nice i'm really thankful for sota for making this happening i want to say thank you also because of that and it was really nice getting to know you guys. I mean, uh, I feel really comfortable talking to you. And I also love the way you think and how you approach uh, approach the subjects. So thank you all. That's all I can say. Thank you so much for letting me be also myself. <laughs> Great, yeah. no problem. <clears throat> Absolutely. Same here. Like, I felt this was like very safe space to admit that I am um, still figuring out stuff. So that's really cool. <laughs> you guys no are awesome. problem at all. One on one, buddy, yeah. you have a natural charisma when you talk. You don't need to be nervous. Uh, you did amazing. I agree. Okay. I agree. So, this is a, another skill, an, a hidden skill that you just discovered. So, in the future, <laughs> you got this, buddy. Um, sure. I want to thank all of you for coming, guys. You were amazing. And I actually really enjoy I've done a few of these, uh, but this has been my absolute favorite. So, just so you know. Um, and I'm, I'm definitely going to, Dorian and I and the rest of the Soda team will come together, put our heads together, figure out how we can continue to do this because I, des I desperately want the world to know about everything you're doing. And that's going to be, this is just, I think this is day one of many. So again, thank you guys. I know all of you have to go. I myself also have to go. So if you feel like you need to sign out, go for it. The, the AMA is recorded. I'll post it very soon for the rest of the world to see. Great. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, to everyone. All right, John. The space was awesome. Bye. Casey, are you still going to go? Casey left already. There you go.